Hello, my name is Bryce from the Waffle Beaver channel, and I enjoy making stuff out of rubbish. I made this mallet out of recycled plastic where I shred, melt, then compress the molten plastic into a concrete mode. The mallet is made from extra stainless steel hardware I've been trying to find a use for. The wood is pallet oak that's glued together and then turned on a lathe. And I find this mallet useful since HDPE is non-stick and easy to clean. And I hope sharing this process encourages others to experiment with applying recycled plastics to your project as well. Here I bought and changed out the motor of this old lathe. So I thought I would turn around mallet head to get some practice. And I think this is some pallet ash. So I carved this wood to what I thought looks like a mallet head and sand it as smooth as possible. This concrete mold box was quickly made with scrap plywood that I picked up while dumpster diving. Just using wood screws, it wasn't perfect, but it worked. The blue Sharpie line is a center line through the box and I drilled a one inch diameter hole with the Forstner bit to make a hole on opposite sides of the box. I cut the box in half on the center line I made and I tend to use blue tape to keep the spacing made from the kerf on the table saw. The wood mallet head sits in this box using the one inch diameter hole to align the side A and side B of the mold. One inch dowels and more plywood was used to hold the mallet in place during the concrete pour. Using a bucket, I guesstimated how much concrete to use. In this case, it's 5,000 PSI Quickrete Ready Mix. I don't need a lot of concrete, and this was also my first time using Ready Mix in a while. I tried to use as little water as possible to mix my concrete uh, to increase the strength. So I have to use a lot more elbow grease than some would. I like an overcooked oatmeal consistency for my concrete mix. My drill is chucked with a piece of steel to vibrate the concrete into place and also notice that I added some tie wire and wood screws in the side of the mold and this is just to help hold the concrete in place when it cracks since there's two types of concrete. Concrete that's cracked and concrete that's going to crack. I trowel the top of the concrete using anything flat-ish that I have lying around and to add some vibration to the mode, I use a tiny steel mallet to hit all the sides. I repeat the same process for side B and to demold the plug or original mallet head, I use a large parallel clamp and wedge steel pins and chisels between the concrete and the clamps. And it's a satisfying feeling to get this thing out of concrete. I shred plastic in my shredder, which is powered by a three-phase motor and BFD, which is not ideal, but it beats cutting up plastic by hand. You can probably find someone close to you willing to gift you shredded plastic if you want to start experimenting. See the link to Precious Plastics in the description, as they also have a lot of other great resources. My melting process is simple. It's an induction hot plate and a cast iron pan with a stainless steel sheet metal cover to hold the heat in. I'll uncover and compress the molten plastic to decrease air bubbles. Using silicone oven mitts, I can pick up the plastic, twist and squeeze the plastic so it can become homogenous. I'll add shredded plastic gradually until it becomes the desired mass for my mold. The brothers make videos explain how to melt in depth, so I'll leave a link to their channel in the description. This first attempt at casting was a fail because I was going to try and separate the molten plastic into two pieces. I could tell that it was cooling too fast in the middle, so I put the pot back on the induction plate and tried again. This time it worked out, so I closed the mode and clamped together using large clamps, adding pressure as fast as I possibly could. I let the plastic cool down for at least half an hour. The longer the better, and the reveal of this is always fun, so enjoy the past me discovering the first mallet head that I've ever uncovered. But yeah, I guess you can see a little bit of the bubbles, but for the most part, it feels actually like a pretty heavy mallet. So, original 
molded. Oh, I will have to put in the lid a little. I cut off the squeeze out before I chuck the plastic mallet head on the lathe, and then I start cleaning up the mallet head. Turning plastic is fun. It feels like a great material to turn as someone who is just beginning to learn how to use the lathe. And these mallets do have some air bubbles, but they're small and turning is one of the quickest ways to feel an air bubble in, in a plastic mallet. And this is where the concrete mold feels like it does a couple of things well. It can handle the heat and take the pressure required to compress the plastic into the desired shape. I do try to recycle any shavings and bits of plastic. These small shavings are also easier to melt. And this vacuum is dedicated to recycled HDPE. I started with breaking down this oak by rough cutting it on the bandsaw, but I learned this is better to do with the hole saw on the drill press. The center holes were made up, were made with a half inch forcener bit to fit over the stainless steel bolt that makes up this handle. I add wood glue onto each disc, then use a toothbrush to spread the glue as evenly as possible. The through bolt is used for my alignment, and once all the wood is stacked up, I add the top washer and nut, then tighten or clamp the wood disc stack together using two wrench pliers. And it's handy to use a toothbrush to clean up the wood glue. And after at least 24 hours of clamping time, I'll remove the through bolt and put the wood handle onto the lathe to turn it into its final form. And I'm not following any plan for how I shape this handle. So each mallet handle will be unique. I think I like it like that. The best thing about having a lathe is being able to sand and finish a piece on the lathe. Running the lathe in reverse and adding coats of polyurethane and wax gives this handle a soft and smooth feel. I used Forstner bits with the drill press to fabricate more holes in the handle and mallet head so the stainless steel hardware would work. Apologies for not filming. This is how the mallet and handle and hardware get assembled together. And I made two versions of this mallet, one with the bottom of the head cut flat and one completely round. And mallets are just things to hit stuff with. This is not a technological advancement, but having a nice mallet with a smooth handle does feel nice and it adds just a bit more joy to hitting things. I hope you enjoyed this video and please leave me a comment and if you have any questions and if you made it this far, please like and subscribe. Thank you.